Well, good afternoon and welcome to another in our series of Wednesday webinars. Got a great topic today, Access Your Capital, Access Capital Plus, Access Plus Capital. Uh, welcome, my name is Kelly Bearden. I'm the director of the CSU Bakersfield Small Business Development Center. We're live today in downtown Bakersfield. Our featured presenter today is Jeremy Hover, and Jeremy is in Fresno at the headquarters of Access Plus Capital. A little bit of information before we get to our presentation today is that the SBDC program is in all 50 states. Uh, we are across the country, over a thousand centers strong. In California, we have six different regions, and our region is the Central California region that provides service to 14 counties from the south part of Kern County to the northern part of Mono, east to the Pacific Ocean and west to the Nevada, well, east to the Nevada border, west to the Pacific Ocean. So we're in 14 counties throughout the region. If you're in one of those counties today, welcome. Uh, our territory here at the CSU Bakersfield Center includes Kern, Inyo, and Mono counties. So a big hearty special welcome to you today. Some of the webinar interact interaction for today is you'll see your dashboard. You'll have a dashboard on the right side. Uh, become a little bit familiar with your dashboard, uh, particularly the question box. If you look at the question box, it has an arrow pointed right. If you click on that, you can open that up and ask questions. We'll have a time at the end of the presentation today for questions and answers. So please, um, enter your questions in there and we will go through as many as possible at the conclusion of the presenter's time today. So use your question box. We thoroughly really want your feedback and want your questions answered. Um, all our attendees today will be muted, so use the question or the chat if you see any potential problems or other issues that are going on. At the end, we have a very simple survey this time. Usually we have a little bit more detailed about the presentation, but we want to get your feedback, and I'm going to give, set this up in advance, because we really want your feedback for webinar topics in 2018. So if you have a particular topic, or even a presenter in mind, please put that in at the end of the webinar, and also in the survey, mention that you would like handouts of today's presentation and we'll send you a PDF handout of the slides from today's webinar. So at the Small Business Development Center, what we do is we provide high quality, no cost to you, confidential one-on-one -on -one consulting. Uh, the reason I say no cost to you is because there is an actual cost of, what I calculate around $84 an hour to provide this very valuable service. We also do training for small business owners on a variety of topics in different media. Uh, the webinar series next year, we're getting ready to announce, oh, maybe a little earlier, but it's likely to go to every single Wednesday next, next year. In addition to that, we have conferences coming up, including a major finance conference that you'll be interested in on the 6th of December that we'll talk about momentarily. We also do special projects and other classes. Uh, for those of you that have 10 or fewer employees, as of 1-1-18, you will be required to do actually online filing and paying for your state payroll taxes. So get some information from your SBDCs if you have any questions on that. And coming up in three weeks on the campus of CSU Bakersfield in the Doré Theater, the Performing Arts Theater, will be the Kern Capital Summit. And the Kern Capital Summit will be a collection of business lending and equity investment type individuals that will be presenting dozens of different programs with funding your business from startup phase to grow your business to expand it in every detail. And that is coming up in three weeks, a very minimal cost of $29 offset by a number of sponsors. Some of them aren't even on the list. So that will be completed in three weeks. Be at the door and for a complete topic. Upcoming webinars, in two weeks we have one on in the financial realm as well, as far as know your cash and forecasting positive cash flow. And in December we go to leadership, with the new year coming in, leadership tools to take you into the next 
series. So before I introduce Jerry, as you, or Jeremy, if you see Jeremy's got a very detailed uh, bio here, I'm not going to read all that. And before we even do that, I'm going to jump into a couple of polls that we have for our attendees, and then we'll get going with Jeremy. And the polls that we're going to ask are, number one, is going to be, how long have you been in business? And we want you to please select one of the following answers. You have not started as of yet. Under two years, two to five years, even in business over five years, or you're not in business at all, but you'd like to help others. So we have about half of you that have voted so far. It's pretty split as we go across the, the table. Uh, nothing really jumping out. 30% so far have, uh, have selected two to five years. We've got about 80% of you voting. That's pretty good. So what we're going to do is give you a couple more seconds, and then we're going to close the poll and share the results. And in our webinar today, we had 84% vote. And the winner is two to five years with 29%. We have 24% that are basically in the startup or uh, pre-venture mode, um, and 19% have been in over five years. So thank you very much for participating in that poll. We have one other one before we get going with Jeremy. And uh, the polls are really helpful because on the fly, they, gave our, they give our presenter a lot of different uh, ways to go with the presentation, especially with, with money, where experience and how long you've been in business and this next question on how much you'd like to borrow are really instrumental. So the next poll is how much money ideally would you like to borrow? And it's 10,000 or less, 10 to 100,000, 100,000 to 500, 500 to a million and over a million. So select your votes and we'll get this thing wrapped up in just a second. We got well, nearly over 70% of you have voted. And up to 83, give you a couple more seconds, and we're going to close the poll right now. And oh, big winner here. Big winner is 10 to $100,000. And we have some that want less than that. And uh, about 30% want between $100,000 and a million dollars. So thank you for your input. Very valuable information indeed. Okay, our presenter today is Jeremy Hofer, and Jeremy is the Director of Operations at Access Plus Capital, uh, formerly known as Fresno CDFI. They work with entrepreneurs who need financing. I like to think of Access Plus Capital as a near bankable lender, meaning that a lot of people can walk into banks and get business loans, and some of them are just close to getting a business loan, but the bank aren't, isn't willing to actually make that deal. So uh, they're a great resource for many of our SBDC clients throughout that 15 county region. I will uh, transfer the controls over to Jeremy at this time and let him tell you even a little bit more about himself. So Jeremy, thank you very much for being our presenter today. I know you have some exciting news about Access Plus Capital in the Bakersfield community. So, um, matter of fact, I'm really excited about it. I should even scoop him, but I'll let him tell you about it. Thank you for joining us, Jeremy. Take it away. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, yeah, it's good to be with you today. Um, for, I'm here in Fresno, but yeah, we do have uh, exciting news about Bakersfield. We're opening up our, our first satellite office in Bakersfield. We have a grand opening coming up on December 12th. Um, and so I'll mention that a little bit later on. Um, just just a quick tidbit about me. I you know I started in banking back in 2008, and I started basically underwriting refugee microloans or microloans for refugees as part of a program of the Fresno Economic uh, Opportunity Commission. And um, from there, you know these were five to ten thousand dollar loans. And so from there. Uh, we grew and we became a CDFI, which I'll uh, get into a little bit about what uh, a, li a little bit on what that's about. 
uh, and and to today where we're opening a, a satellite office in Bakersfield and, and soon to also open one up in Modesto. So it's good to be with you all. Thank you for, for participating. So what is a community development financial institution? Essentially, we are a private nonprofit financial intermediary. That's a a lot of kind of long words for basically saying we uh, we get investments from banks as well as private foundations and government entities and we lend those investments in smaller loans, micro loans as well as loans that go up to 500,000 uh, to, to our community. We foster public-private partnerships. Literally every loan that we do involves both private money as well as public money. So we would, we would, for instance, combine money from, from the USDA with money from a bank that, that they've lent us and we would uh, provide that investment into, our, into a small business. We promote community development. So what that means is we, we participate in and we build uh, partnerships and uh, collaboratives uh, to improve the situation for entrepreneurs in our service region. We also create we create economic opportunities by financing and training and so the, a big aspect to what we do is also the training that we and the technical assistance that we offer. Uh, there, there are over a thousand CDFIs across the country. Uh, as this is the breakdown. We would be considered a loan fund um, there are loan funds for, for affordable housing, there are lo other types of loan funds, uh, small, we are strictly a small business loan fund. This is our region and uh, really our, our vision is uh, a prosperous Central California that's powered by entrepreneurship. And we do this by supporting small businesses that create and sustain jobs in underserved communities. And uh, really, if you look at this region, this entire region is considered an underserved community. Uh, it's a very rural region that we serve, and um, you know, it's it uh, all of the difficulties that come along with that. Um, we try to help, and so basically, we do this through training and finance, and that's that's really where our name comes from. So access to training, access to to technical assistance and networks, as what well, plus the capital that's needed is our formula for success. So we, our loan amounts go from 5,000 to 500,000. And um, this is, these are some of the, re, the purposes that we, we use our, fun, our funds for, or uh, that our funds can be invested for, working capital. So um, that might be for inventory, large purchases of inventory, uh, to finance receivables. So as, as companies are growing, so do their receivables. And, and as, especially when companies are growing fast, they need to finance those and, and basically fill that gap. Uh, expansions, hiring of employees, we help, we help the company relocate their, uh, their office and expand into downtown Fresno. And as part of that, they had to hire a couple of employees. And so all of the, all of the costs that go along with, with expanding your workforce, maybe you're working, you're moving into hiring your first employee or you're expanding into um, another situation might be you're a, a contractor that's going from private work to public work and they're having to uh, uh, finance a growing receivable base. So those are all working capital purposes. Machinery and equipment. We do a lot of uh, small uh, equipment loans. When I say small, it might be any, anywhere in the range from $5,000 for uh, a vacuum cleaner system for a, for a home care or a home cleaning service, all the way up to a truck that could cost upwards of $100,000. Commercial real estate, uh, this is actually a, a, a salon that we financed. They had been in a in a, in a rented location and they expanded to this small, relatively small location, but for us that's really our niche are these small commercial real estate projects throughout the valley. Acquisitions. This is a great example of an acquisition. Um, the woman on the left there uh, acquired uh, a bakery from the woman on the right. The woman on the right is uh, her and her husband uh, were retiring and they had built this business up over 25 years and um, uh, the, 
they, they were able to uh, acquire the business through that and carry on that legacy. Tenant improvements. So uh, anytime there's leasehold improvements when you're moving from one space to another, um, that there, you, there definitely is the need for improvements uh, on that. And letter of credit. This is this is an example of uh, a daycare or a uh, that needed to get licensing. But in order to get licensing licensing from the state of California, they had to show liquidity. So they had to show that they had either money in the bank or a letter of credit. Or um, and so we were able to provide them with a letter of credit. They got licensing, and then we funded them after the uh, the licensing was obtained. So we're not necessarily always putting money in the bank right away. There might be instances where we provide a letter of credit. There might also be instances where we provide a, what's called a drawdown line of credit. And that drawdown al allows for um, the, the loan funds to be drawn over a period of time, for instance, as a, as a business starts up or as a contract uh, is executed. And so um, there may be a case where it, uh, the con there, there may be a contract or a situation where you, the exact amount of money needed is not known, but you need to have that assurance that the funds are going to be there. And so we are able to provide that. And then refinance. This is an actual loan that we've, we refinanced. Um, and uh, we're, we do see a lot of these, these loans, especially with online lenders, um, where we're able to go in and provide them longer term, longer terms and really help their cash flow. So the bottom line for us is we serve small business owner operators. So that that essentially ex excludes investor uh, investor type businesses, investment type properties. Uh, if there's a commercial real estate property, the rule is they uh, the owner has to operate from that real estate. Fifty at least fifty percent of the square footage has to be um, the owner operated. Uh, the the rest of it can be rented out. Then or subleased, and so we do these uh, these loans through essentially three different pro products that that we have, and there's they're somewhat distinct processes. So that's what I'm going to focus this presentation on here today. The micro loan; these are fifty thousand dollars and under. Enterprise loans for fifty thousand to five hundred thousand, and startup loans. These are for businesses that are under one year of operations, as well as those businesses that have not started yet. So between the two, I'm going to just switch over and show you guys what, what, our, what it looks like on our website. When you click on apply for a loan up here on our website at accesspluscapital.com, it guides you to two, two different tracks, essentially an existing business, and startup business. And so the existing business, if, if you're looking for funds that are 50,000 and under, there's an online application. There's no upfront doc, documentation. And, um, and however, if you're looking for more than $50,000 for existing businesses, there's, a, there's an application that is a paper application. You can fill it out in, on a PDF. And you can also submit an inquiry form here on, um, on this route. And so because this is a larger sum of money, uh, the goal is really to under get a better understanding of what the need is before we jump into an application. Um, but for, so for financing for existing businesses for microloans, the process is essentially an online application there's a two-day pre-qualification based on what the stated income and what is stated in the in the online application. There's so there's no upfront documentation until that pre-qualification is 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 provided. So you you already have a light at the end of the tunnel. You know what you qualify for, and the documentation is essentially to um, to follow up and to to back that up. Uh, we do have a collateral support programs. We use a number of different collateral support programs. Um, that so if if collateral is not one to one, if you don't have uh, a fully collateralized uh, loan, we can provide uh, support to that. And funding occurs two to four weeks. This is important in this day and age of 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 quick turnaround funding and algorithms. We you know we we do strive to 
to have quick funding times, but it's important to know that, that we're not going to be the option if you need money tomorrow or yesterday. We are definitely um, uh, one, a lender that strives for, to, be, uh, for, to be streamlined, but there, because it is an SBA, these are SBA funds, these are USDA funds, we do have to do our proper due diligence on, on our end. Um, and our fees, upfront fees, 2% loan packaging fee and a 7.75% interest rate. That's for our microloans. And our terms typically are between three and six years. And it's uh, the, the, the smaller the loan, the shorter the term, essentially. And then we have, uh, we do have a, a technical assistance department that provides ongoing advisory services. This is value added to our customer base. And um, so once you have a loan, you, you're assigned a technical assistance advisor who then works with you on any issue, whether it's a marketing issue or um, finding the right bookkeeper or whatever it may be if you're ready to move again. Basically, our technical assistant advisors are there to, to provide you with uh, connection, connectivity and referrals as well as uh, direct support if needed. So continuing on with existing businesses, um, for loans that are above 50,000, these are our enterprise loans. And it really starts with a consultation with our business development officer. Um, we have a, a group of, uh, one of our business development officers will reach out to you and discuss the need and really figure out what the, what the right, um, what the right uh, process and documentation will be for that. For instance, on, an, on a working capital loan, we might need your accounts receivable aging report to see kind of what, what your receivables look like and to understand your working capital need. Whereas on a commercial real estate or an acquisition, we'll, we'll need a, a, a different set of, of documents. So um, really that, that first, that free consultation up front is, is important. Um, we have in-house underwriters that, uh, that are here in Fresno and um, uh, that helps us kind of expedite the underwriting and funding is a little longer than our than our microloans typically within four to six weeks of, of um, submitting your application if it is a commercial real estate project um, add a couple weeks at least to the project to there are third-party appraisals and, and environmental reviews that need to be done and our interest rates are again are, are, are between six and eight percent and one to two percent loan packaging fees. Our terms on these loans go much longer uh, for commercial real estate will go up to 25 years. So for startup businesses, um, it really starts with a bit uh, business plan and really kind of looking at that plan and understanding is this a feasible business? So whether, whether you haven't started yet or you're in the process of, of just beginning we would want to see a, a set of projections that are, are um, that detail your your projected income and your projected expenses. Uh, how do you do that? Uh, a good place to start is a small business development center. They have a lot of support for small for startup businesses and guiding, guidance in terms of putting a good projection to, to, together. I always recommend if you're going to put a business plan together, start with a projection. Start with what what you think you're going to do, and then build that plan around those projections. Uh, what are the assumptions behind those projections? Um, it, it so it's really it's it's really driven by what you see your market is going to be, what you, what you expect your growth is going to be, and then be conservative on these projections. Uh, a lot of times I'll say, you know, show me your worst case scenario that still repays my loan. I, we don't. Uh, if you're approaching an investor, there's a lot that there. There's a lot of incentive to present very um, kind of blue sky projections and and very rosy projections. When you're when you're approaching a lender, you really want to demonstrate uh, a conservative approach that you've taken into account potential kind of you know your 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 potential pitfalls and in, and in, into your your revenue projections. We do require a 25% minimum owner injection, meaning we will finance up to 75% of the total project cost. When, when I say total project cost, this, this for, for a business, this might be the equipment that is needed. It would be any, any um, working capital that's needed essentially to get the business up to break even point. 
so the, so that would be you know keeping the lights on, um, paying paying uh, salaries, anything uh, workers comp upfront bills, uh, insurance. So that's the working capital need. Um, there might be uh, we see a lot of tenant improvement that's required there. So we take all of those expenses and that's our total project cost. What we want to see is that 25% is coming from from the owner. It, this this is typically from savings. However, we've seen some pretty innovative approaches to to getting equity in in projects such as crowdfunding. Uh, we had a, a project uh, actually with Kelly where uh, the the food truck uh, was the the person that was starting a food truck company had raised twenty thousand dollars off of Kickstarter prior to approaching us for funding, and that was his his equity injection. We were able to then finance his truck. And, um, and then he had the working capital he needed to get going. And then we also see loans from friends or family that come in. Um, it's important to note that we will request that they subordinate those loans so in order to see those as, as equity. And subordination essentially says, Access Plus, we know that, that you're in first and, and if, if there's a question of payment, we, our, our loan payment will, will come you know, after yours. So it doesn't mean you can't, you can't necessarily pay them at some point but there's there's there shouldn't be a set amortization schedule or a set loan payment that is technically a loan from an outside entity but a loan from friend or family that's kind of like pay me when you can that's that's definitely something that we've seen industry and business experience this is really critical for us um, we we want to see five years um, of, of industry and business experience uh, so that might be, you know, somebody that's managed a business, uh, a similar business, or a business in the industry, or or owned a business in the industry, and so providing a resume up front as part of that package is is a big is a big piece of it. And then startup startup loans take a little bit longer as well, typically four to six weeks. Uh, some some of what holds us up is is that initial feasibility. So if we're looking at the business plan, there's things that need to be updated or, or you know um, kind of uh, uh, just clarified uh, there's sometimes work back and forth between the loan officer and the business as well as SPDC or another advisor so what are some kind of overall um, things that we look at uh, uh, you may have heard lending five C's that there are five C's of lending and and I'm gonna kind of give you our take on those five C's uh, the first C that I'm going to talk about is cash flow. Cash flow is money that's available to pay debt, essentially, and um, keep as well as keep the lights on and pay pay salaries and all of that. But ultimately, what what is the cash flow that we're looking at is what is left over of profits after you pay other debt obligations. Um, and so, in order to determine this on an enterprise loan, we're going to look at three years of tax returns. On a micro loan. Uh, it depends on the size. So if it's a if it's a ten thousand dollar loan re loan request, we don't we don't request a tax return. We're looking at bank statements and a, and a current profit and loss. But if it's a fifty thousand, we're looking at two tax returns. So it does it does vary on loan size, but ultimately we look at those historical financials, and then we want to see also a projection that helps us get comfortable that our loan moving forward is going to be um, is going to be able to be paid. Uh, not on an existing, such as like a commercial real estate, we wouldn't require a projections on that. But if if there is an expansion, let's say you've been two years in in business and you're looking to to expand to a new location, or you're looking to take on a take on a new line of business, we would want to see a, a projection that shows how that new line of business or that new location is going to play into your cash flow moving forward. Credit we. We are uh, we are definitely uh, more flexible when it comes to credit. This is probably one of the areas that CDFIs are are able to um, to fill uh, a niche that we're able to fill. Uh, we we do if there are derogatory items on the credit that you know of, my recommendation is just be upfront about those and and maybe even provide an explanation of credit at the time that you're you're applying because that that really helps us understand what was the what was the root cause of of those derogatory items, uh, we do need to see at least 
two years out of a bankruptcy, discharge of bankruptcy. Um, if there are existing collections on your credit, um, those need to be at least in a plan for repayment. Um, it, medical collections we look at a little bit more leniently, but, um, but clearly if you have a judgment, uh, a lien, a tax lien, things like that on, on credit, those are things that need to be A, explained, and then B, uh, typically we want to see some type of payment agreement that's in place so that we, un we can understand how those obligations are going to be taken care of. I, I definitely recommend everybody go to annualcreditreport.com. That is, uh, everybody is entitled to three free credit reports per year. But now there's a ton of, also, there's also apps that like Credit Karma that help update you on your credit um, on an ongoing basis. Collateral. Uh, big question, a lot of questions around collateral. What we look at for collateral would be the business assets. Um, we place a UCC filing on business assets. Uh, that would be any equipment that's owned by the, by the business. It would be the accounts receivable of the business. Beyond that, um, there, are, there are times that we will look at also personal assets, um, such as personal real estate, personal vehicles, to strengthen the loan request. Um, ultimately, if cash flow is strong and credit is strong, then our collateral becomes less of an issue. But if one of the two, cash flow or credit, are, are impaired, then collateral is where we can make up the difference. And so, um, so when, we, when we are short on collateral, let's say it's a working capital loan uh, and we're going to lean the business assets, but you know, after we take an advance rate, an advance rate is essentially what a lender um, discounts the collateral by to, uh, to basically understand what the value would be um, if it were repossessed. So after an advance rate, um, if we need to make up that difference, we have a number of guarantee programs that we can use, including an SBA 7A guarantee, a state guarantee, and then the CalCap collateral support program that we use. And capital, this is the fourth C, uh, skin in the game. This is essentially your equity. What have you put in? So um, we do want to see injection to most pro projects. Uh, most projects require at least 10% injection. Like I said, startups, we would want to see 25%. But that's, that's going to be uh, established through either bank statements showing, showing those ex expenses or, or checks and, and receipts. And so th that would be collected um, prior to dispersing the loan or closing the loan, just to show that, that there, there has been an, an equity injection from the, from the applicant into the project. And the final one is this is conditions. And this is where your business plan comes in as, as a startup. Um, if, it's, if it's not a startup, uh, conditions are really around kind of what, what's the current environment for, for this request. So is the, there's a contract that, that has come up. We'd want we'd to understand that contract. We'd, under, we'd want to understand, you know, why are you hiring new, new employees? What's the need there? And, and that, that is, is, if it's for an existing business, a business plan is not required, but for a, uh, an existing business, it would be in that conversation with your loan officer, um, just kind of describing what the conditions around the, the loan request are. Long versus short-term finance. This is a pain point that I've seen. Um, one thing that about our loans is they tend to be more patient than other lenders that are out there, meaning our, we can go longer with our loan terms than, um, than what, what is typically available on kind of uh, online and, and short uh, other types of, of lenders or, or non-bank lenders. Uh, long-term debt would really be for long-term assets like real estate, equipment, vehicles, as well as business acquisitions. Medium-term debt, between one and five years, that, this would be for smaller equipment. Uh, permanent working capital. Permanent working capital is, is, that, is that capital that's needed to, to plug your, the gap between your receivables and your payables. So that's, that's, that, um, that's, that's the capital that, that's needed to just keep, keep your, your working capital cycle going, keep, keep the engine going. And then refinances um, would, be, would be, typically be medium term debt unless they're very large or for commercial real estate refinance. Short-term debt, th these are going to be contract financing, construction loans, as well as bridge financing. 
Bridge is an area that we've we've um, we've done uh, as well, and I didn't mention earlier, but a situation for bridge financing may be that, uh, for instance, a contractor needs to perform on a project that's going to take about six to nine months, and and the funding is not going to come in until the end of that project. So that that's where we would do something like an interest-only loan with a with a balloon at the end of it, so that that it would we would be paid out on that contract. And so some some uh, I just wanted to mention a couple of uh, short-term options out there because we're not always the best fit for short-term debt. Uh, like I mentioned, most of our loans are going to be, you know, three to three to twenty-five years. But there are some options out there. I don't like to promote factoring that much, but for some, it may be an option. Factoring is where you're going to be selling your invoice. So if, if what you have is invoice and you need quick financing, that would be an option. Overdraft protection with your bank. Um, I've seen a lot of businesses use that for short-term gaps. Trade credit is definitely something that that you want to pursue. And we will ask about that. What are your terms with your with your vendors? And then line of credit. So we do not offer line of credit. That would be something that that is would be a goal for for many of our customers. And so if we're providing a working capital loan, uh, it's likely that in two to three years we would get refinanced out with a line of credit or a bank loan. Once once our customers have reached that that uh, that area. So that's that's where we're that's why we call ourselves a bridge to the bank to banking and then I just want to put a quick word of warning out there for you know what the difference between interest rate and APR or annual percentage rate uh, I see this a lot these days uh, there are short a lot of short-term loans um, merchant cash advances things like that 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 take money out on a daily or even you know weekly basis uh, directly from the bank account a lot of times these loans this might be a ten thousand dollar infusion that costs $2,500 over, let's say, 90 days, right? So $2,500, a $10,000 loan, that's 25% interest, right? Wrong. It's actually 100% interest because you have to multiply that. You have to annualize that, that interest rate. And so that's where the, the uh, short-term loans can get very costly. We see a lot of times um, because they're in 90 days, that another loan needs to be taken out, and it just compounds the issue. And so, um, if if for businesses that are caught up in that cycle, we definitely want to be able to be an alternative for that and provide a, a longer term, uh, longer term loan to allow the business to get out of that, which is essentially a payday lending cycle. As Kelly mentioned, we have a um, we have a grand opening in Bakersfield. I want to invite everybody on the 12th of December. We will be located at the Self-Help Federal Credit Union. Uh, Self-Help is also a CDFI, so they, they do tend to serve a lot of the, the same clientele, but we, we, we have an office there that is, we are a separate entity from Self-Help. And our loan, uh, we have a loan officer in Bakersfield, Yeti, who, will, who can come out to your business or, or meet with you. And so uh, if you are in the Bakersfield or Kern County, even uh, Tulare County area, uh, we can certainly have her reach out to you. That's my information. I, I really welcome any questions. Um, and uh, there's our website. It's a good place to get started. Uh, you can sign up for our newsletter. And, and basically, you know, the, the, just to kind of finish this off, we are community driven, we're community based. Our mission is to, to grow businesses and jobs. And so our mission comes first and we want to be of service to you if we can be. Thank you. Okay. Well, this is the opportunity now for you to move forward and to actually ask questions. And you can ask questions of Jeremy. Uh, so it's your time now, so don't be shy. A number of you are asking about how to get a copy of the slideshow, and we will have a survey at the end and just answer one simple little question, and then you will be able to actually, uh, you will actually then be able to leave your information there, and we will email it to you in the next few days. So. So I know one question that I have. 
Jeremy, and that's on timeline. Like, let's say, let's say I have a normal deal uh, of, a, let's say, hundred thousand dollars because that was popular today. You know, what really, what is my expectation? In fact, during what I need to give you the information, what is my timeline and my expectation for getting that information to you? Sure. So, um, the once we receive an application. What, what our commitment is to have a, a, a final decision within that 30 days. Um, so a lot of times it can happen quicker within two weeks, but uh, our commitment is to is that four week uh, maximum timeline. And so what it looks like it, on an enterprise loan for $100,000, um, I mean you have to, it's, it's the, the loan payment on $100,000 is is more than a mortgage payment. I mean, it's it's about twice that of a mortgage payment, and so um, maybe a little less. So it, it is something that that we have to do our due diligence on. Uh, the The conversation starts with the loan officer. The packet is submitted to the loan officer. They ensure that everything is is there that that is needed. They do a write up and submit. So within a week, they submit to underwriting. And so once the underwriter gets it, they do a review. Uh, three days is the review. And so within three days, there should be a response from the loan officer moving that file forward uh, or requesting further information uh, if there are if something is unclear. Once the once that information, so that's that's where that second week typically comes around, then we submit, um, we do submit the loan finalize the credit memo, we submit it to a loan committee, and that loan committee makes the decision and the, we get the final approval. Now, I will say once we, uh, once it's submitted to, if the underwriter is preparing the credit memo and submitting to loan committee, 90% of, of those deals are approved. So we pretty much know that we're going to have a approval, but it's, it's a matter of going through that process for loan committee. We do not wait for loan committee, we post it it's posted online and they review, they give the final review so that we can expedite that. Um, so once after the approval, the, you know, a lot of times people are expecting money the next day. There are, there are um, some additional items. If, it's, if it doesn't involve commercial real estate, we're funding in a week. But if it does involve commercial real estate, like I said, it can take another two to four weeks depending on if there's environmental reports that are needed. Um, an environmental report would be needed, for instance, if, if it's a gas station or if there are tanks on the property or something that might contaminate the property. That would be something that we would need. If it's a business acquisition, we have an approval, that it ha goes similar to like a, uh, you go through escrow, just like buying a house, you're buying, it's called bulk sale escrow. And um, so that process is its own thing. It, it has to be posted in the in the paper in a in a periodical, and it has to go in you know the the review of the of the sell the business that's being sold, and so that again that can extend it out for that two to four weeks. So all told, you know we're, our our goal is to within within four to six weeks on a on a hundred thousand dollar deal to have funding, uh, whereas on a micro loan which is fifty thousand and under. Uh, two to four weeks. Okay, next question. Uh, Jeremy, we have a question from a student who has yet to establish credit, so they virtually have no credit history. Are there any resources available to them? There are resources. So, um, credit building is is really is important. So, there's a couple of 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 um, Places you can there's a there's a group online called Credit Builders Alliance. We are a member, uh, Credit Builders Alliance dot, dot org. I, I believe I'm not certain. I can look it up as I as we look here. But that would be something to Google, and they have a lot of resources on on how to build credit. Uh, get if you cannot access a a, a credit card yet. Um, you can get a secured credit card and start building credit that way. You do have to put a certain amount of money down, like $100, $100 and put it down and, and then um, as a deposit, but you can start utilizing a credit, credit card that way. Um, and then there's a great product that I recently found out about, um, self-help 
Federal Credit Union provides what's called a fresh start, um, fresh start loan, and essentially it's a savings program. So you save over a given amount of time, you put that money aside, and they then they provide you, uh, and that helps start starts to help build your credit that way. So rather than taking out a credit card and getting into debt, it's it's utilizing a savings approach, and then at the end of it, you have that money to to utilize. Um, how you how you want to do it. So there's a couple of different ways to do it. If you have collections, um, you know there there's there's some strategies on that. Uh, if you have if bad credit because of collect collections, what I, what I've seen recommended is is to um, look at the collections that are reporting very regularly. Those are going to be ones that keep hitting your dropping your score and taking taking care of those. Uh, it's usually more beneficial to save up and then take care of it all at once rather than pay over a long period of time because you you won't clear that it won't it won't be cleared from your record until it unless it's taken off and settled. Um, but I hope those are just some approaches that that could could help. Okay, next question. The next question has to do with refining commercial property. Is the 75% funding guideline still hold true? So, uh, if you have a commercial property that you're that you're operating from, we we would be able to refinance that property up to 90%. So we we would look for 10% um, down. There have been instances we've we've done the entire. Uh, the, the the entire refi without any down. So no, the the twenty five percent down only applies for a startup business, uh, a startup business situation. On a refinance, there's times we're we're refinancing one hundred percent of that loan, including a, a commercial real estate loan. And going back to the credit the credit question, I just it, as far as as our loans, we do. We, you can qualify for a $5,000 small uh, loan with no credit at all. What, what, if, if you need more and you don't have credit, then bringing on a co-signer is, is really the way to go about that. Okay, uh, question from Marvin. Can you actually uh, differentiate for us, please, the difference between startups and a three-year business as far as the criteria that you use? Sure. We consider anything under one year as a startup. After one year of operations, you sh there should be a tax return that's available for the company and, and enough of a trend for us to be able to, um, to understand what the, what the historicals look like. There's also likely much more investment in that project. So, uh, so there's, there's, you know, the 25% requirement doesn't hold for anything that's over one year. But if there's if they're under one year, we do want to continue to see that 25% investment because that's that equity that's being put into that business, and so that's that's really our dividing line is one year. I, there's banks will look at it differently. Some look at two to three years as up to two years as startups, um, but fundamentally, if it's a startup, if it if the business has been under one year, then we consider that a startup, and we we don't go through the online uh, application kind of, which is more of the expedited application. It has to go through a startup, and we need to review a business plan and a set of projections. Okay, next question, uh, Jeremy. What is your advice for somebody who is wanting to finance a business but doesn't know where to start? And let me actually look to your screen, and I would say I would attend the Kern Capital and number six. But that's just a shameless plug. So thank you, whoever asked that question. Yeah, no, it's a great. It's but what great would you question. suggest, Jeremy? Yeah, are you sure you didn't ask that question, Kelly? Because um, it's because honestly, I think the small business development centers have been have been an excellent resource for for just a place to kind of start and get 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 a feel for it. There's also a ton of um, resources online. Um, and then a big part of what we do is this, this pre-loan technical assistance, which this, this workshop falls into, but also the one-on-one -on -one, uh, meetings and phone consultations that our, our team has. 
we have a we have a not only you know somebody in Bakersfield now, but we have a team in Fresno that can that can go out and just and also just talk over the phone to give a, a to get give you a sense of what's going to work and what's not. Um, my recommendation is always you know you may have a Cadillac plan for your business, but just also you might want to consider thinking of it in phases. So you want to get to a, a full brick and mortar that's going to cost five five hundred thousand dollars. Well, can you start on Kate? Can you start with catering? Can you start with a food truck? Is there a way to to kind of get into that that line of business to the point where you're ready to 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 then go? It's more of an expansion into that that Cadillac plan that you have. So that's that's just one little piece of recommend of, of recommendation. Okay, next question. I need somewhere around eight hundred thousand dollars to finance an expansion of. Uh, of a restaurant, is this something you can do? We go up to 500, so uh, we cannot do it. We do have partners um, that that can do it, um, and and we we regularly refer people directly, make warm warm referrals um, and, and introductions to to our partners. I would encourage you to email me, and and I can I can provide that that recommendation directly. The other, the other resource that I would really recommend is, is calling up Kelly because the small business development centers, they, they, they don't only deal with us, obviously. They, they have a, a, a range of lenders that they deal with, and they have, they, they have a, a requirement. Uh, you know, they're funded to, to get funding for, and investments for the clients that they serve. So I'm sure Kelly or, or, or the director that's in your region, every region has a different director, would would love to discuss that need with you and and get you to to one of their other lenders as well. Well, great. Well, seeing we're about out of time, I'd like to thank Jeremy today for his presentation. We do have upcoming webinars that are coming up in the next, near future. A real dynamic presentation on understanding cash flow. And cash flow, you heard mentioned by Jeremy at least seven or eight times today. Uh, so really understanding your cash flow and where your cash comes from. That'll be two weeks on November 29th. And then leadership, some of the strengths that you can have in using uh, different models that are out there. And leadership is really an important commodity these days. So our time is up for Jeremy Hofer. I'm Kelly Bearden. Have a great day, and we will see you online.